Hello kiddies, your Uncle Spurt is literally just about to jet off to Barcelona for Mobile World Congress where I'm going to race around like a mentalist and try and get lots of tasty hands-on action with some fresh new smartphones, shoot a shitload of video for you fine folk at home. And of course, while I'm there, I'd be rude if I didn't just throw obscene amounts of tapas and a stray dam down my throat until either it's time to come home or my heart violently explodes inside of my chest. One of the two. I'm actually just packing my bag, making sure I've got all the essentials for running about the place, getting some hot funnily action with all that new mobile tech. So for instance, got some hand gel, very important indeed because us nerdy tech twats are a germy bunch. And those demo phones at the booths do get passed around more than your mum down the local discotheque. Got a few tinnies of course, yet another essential when you're stuck in an hour long launch event in some Barcelona sweat box that smells worse than a whole sack of kangaroo farts. Oh and a little bit of the old special just in case. Oh and a spare change of pants obviously, I'm not an animal. Going for three nights, so one pair should do it. And oi, cheeky, no peeking. Oh and a little something to stimulate the brain while I'm hanging around the airport. This one's got a spot the difference I've been trying to crack for months now. Now I'll get you this time you bastard. So I get that little lot shoved back in there and then it's just my camera and laptop so I can actually shoot and edit some video. Oh, bollocks won't quite fit in unfortunately. Ugh, I guess I could take out some of the beer. Nah. Techspert Weekly. So I hope you enjoyed your private tour of Uncle Spurt's sack. Now it's time for the good stuff. So MWC proper kicks off on Sunday the 26th and several manufacturers have confirmed that they will be launching new blows at MWC 2023, including the mighty Xiaomi who have an event scheduled for Sunday afternoon. That's right, Sunday afternoon, my favourite time of the week to drink several pints of warm beer in some dark corner of a suitably grotty pub until I'm royally bollocksed. So that's awesome, thanks Xiaomi. And we won't actually be seeing any proper new phones at the launch because the Xiaomi 13 and 13 Pro have actually already been unveiled in China. But this is their full global debut so I'll finally get my mitts all over these shiny wee beasties. If you want something that'll have your mates all agog when you whip it out down the local boozer, the Xiaomi 13 Pro is the one to go for. This 6.73 inch monster sports Sony's 1 inch IMX989 camera sensor which is great for night photography and optimised to work fluidly with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 which just happens to be the brains of the operation here. And if that sounds far too much for your heart and your pants to handle well maybe downscale to the regular Xiaomi 13. This mini model measures in at 6.36 inches but still rocks an 8 Gen 2 and this time a still very lovely Sony IMX800 camera sensor. The Xiaomi 13 may have a slightly smaller 4500 mAh battery compared with the Pros but both of these flagships boast a bit of wireless charging action. As you'd expect from flagship blows you've got premium specs across the board, gorgeous AMOLED screens, bit of LTPO tech for the Pro model and hopefully they'll cost a serious chunk of change less than Samsung's Galaxy S23 and S23 Ultra otherwise it's time to take the pliers to Grand's gold teeth. And also on Sunday, as if I already won't be crammed into enough sweat boxes filled with other hygienically disadvantaged journalists and bloggers, HMD Global is going to be spaffing out some fresh new Nokia smartphones and they've actually done a really bloody good job of keeping these under wraps. We did see some new XG and C range Nokia smartphones trickle out at IFA 2022 back in September. So I am wondering if it'll just be feature phones at MWC, including their usual effort of bringing back a retro phone from the dead for a proper full on nostalgia fest, just like last year's Express Audio shenanigans. And if we are going to see a classic Nokia blower dragged out of its grave at MWC 2023, well I already know what I want to see. And yeah, this choice may make you think I've already smashed back far too many pina coladas and I should probably go have a bit of a lie down, but seriously, hear me out. What I want to see at MWC 2023 is a resurrection of the Nokia N-Gage. Just think about it, right, handheld gaming is crazy popular right now with the Steam Deck, the Switch, all of that. And modern smartphones are, let's face it, about as thrilling as sitting through your kid's school play while stone cold sober. But a refreshed N-Gage that looks a wee bit less shit and can play a range of ported indie games, maybe some classic retro titles like the Evercade, now that would be proper full on boner time. Of course the N-Gage was a god awful flop and I'm not entirely sure HMD would want to celebrate this crushing financial disaster by bringing it back a full two decades on, but hope springs eternal. Next up, on Monday February the 27th, Honor will be clambering up on a stage at MWC 2023 to get us all chuffed to bits about the fresh new Magic 5 handsets. 
Word on the street is there's going to be three of the buggers, although we have already had one launch, the Magic 5 Lite, so hopefully that'll count as one of the trio. Now, the word is there'll be a Magic 5, a 5 Pro and a 5 Prestige, and here's possibly an early glimpse of the new handsets, courtesy of Rodent 950. As you can see, they're all rocking a similar Eye of Muse camera bump to last year's Magic. For the specs, Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 should once again be powering all three of these blowers, while a handful of internet leaks suggest that the whole range will be massive 6.8 inch mega bastards. One of the first differences between the Honor Magic 5 Trio appears to be the battery tech, because while the regular Magic 5 has a 5000mAh battery crammed inside, the Pro and the Prestige apparently sport a slightly smaller 4800mAh effort. But you're not just getting less for your money, of course. Apparently, these more pricey handsets also give the charging speeds a kick up the cock, boosting it right up to 100 watts. While they'll also dish up a proper bit of water resistance and some super posh 3D face unlock action. And apparently, all three pack in a different Sony camera sensor. You've got a 54 meg IMX 800 on the Magic 8, a yet to be announced IMX 878 with optical image stabilization on the Pro and that rather tasty 1 inch 50 meg IMX 989 from the Xiaomi 13 Pro for the Prestige. But anywho, your Uncle Spurt will be at the Honor launch and if there are indeed three new phones I'll try and get some hands on action with all of them, by which point my bloody fingers will probably be falling off. And what about the other big tech bonds? Well, of course, OnePlus has already launched its latest flagship phone, the OnePlus 11, but at MWC 2023, we might get some hands-on time with the new OnePlus Pad tablet, which looks like a serious iPad rival, albeit one with an obscenely massive camera slapped on that arse. And there may well be some other top-secret OnePlus shenanigans there as well, more on that on Monday. And Realme is also expected to launch the global version of its fresh new GT Neo 5 blower. Like the Neo 3 before it, the Neo 5 should offer a near flagship experience for a mid-range price. So expect the older Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 to power proceedings, hopefully with none of the heating issues previously experienced, while the near 5000mAh battery should support stupidly fast 240 watt charging. There's a 6.7-ish AMOLED screen, a 50 meg camera with OIS that's probably going to be the IMX 766, etc, etc. And I really like the Realme GT blowers from last year, so fingers crossed the GT Neo 5 will be a bit of a star. And we may well see a launch for the Huawei Mate X3 with all of its bendy, foldy smarts. Probably no Oppo launches by the looks of it, especially as they just spunked out their fresh new Find N2 Flip last week. Definitely go check out my video on that, it's a bit of a cracker if I do say so myself. So sadly we may have to wait a wee bit longer for the Find X6 and the Find X6 Pro to emerge. I say sadly, surely that's enough bloody phones for one export already. And likewise it's doubtful that Samsung is going to show off any shiny new tech at MWC. They already kept us YouTube tech twats well busy in February with the launch of the Galaxy S23 series and a whole bunch of new laptops. And Sony probably won't waggle about any new Xperia's until spring at the very earliest. And there you have it, that's the biggest bunch of launches you can expect from MWC 2023. Lots of shiny sh** to look forward to in the coming months. So definitely poke the old subscribe button, bash that bell, and tell your mates to do the same because it's going to be an absolute orgy of tech greatness right here on the spurts. And now that's done, we've got just enough time, kiddies, before I hop on a plane and get absolutely mullered on tiny tins of Heineken for viewer comments. Viewer comments. So first up, Fezza says, that joke at the start was out of pocket. Is, is that good? I mean, I'm old. I don't know these things. I've only just about caught up with lit and jokes. Maybe I'll know what out of pocket means by about 2035. Uh, Martin Sell says, I've been watching a while and I can tell you when he says he's going to link to something, it's never there. Because he's a funny drunk, we keep watching and it's always fun when he's hanging out of his arse. Yeah, I'm not actually that hungover today because I spent so much bloody time shooting and editing video out of MWC. I haven't had enough time to get soused. That's a problem that will definitely be rectified over in Barcelona, let me tell you. Next up, Fujiwara says, The Xperia 1 Mark IV is so close to perfection, Sony should not have that much of a hard time fixing the few mistakes in the 1 Mark V. What I mainly want to see is a bigger battery, better chipset, better cooling, less overheating, SD card slot and headphone jack obviously, slightly brighter screen, fast charging, 45 watts maybe, bring back the gallery app, and better worldwide availability. So close to perfection apart from just a, just a couple of wee bits there. Yeah, the worldwide availability is a very good point, uh, though like Sony is really stingy on where it actually brings out its smartphones usually, so fingers crossed this will get a bit more global reach. 
So continuing with the Xperia 1 Mark 5 shenanigans, A. Smith says that his wish list includes a point and shoot iPhone 14 Pro auto camera mode, bit of face unlock, more than or at least four years of Android OS upgrade support, cameras that don't overheat, fast, wide and wireless charging. Well, hopefully that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 will mean that the new Xperia doesn't get all toasty like the previous models. But yeah, remember if you shot more than a couple of minutes of footage with that Xperia 5 Mark IV and then slipped it straight back in the old trouser pocket, you'd be at serious risk of singeing the old ball bag. But yeah, I don't think you're ever going to see a proper dedicated auto mode in a Sony smartphone. Again, certainly not one that actually does as good a job as other flagship phones. They're definitely aiming this stuff at the pro photographers slash enthusiasts. Next up, Solus says, I love everything about the Xperia 1 and the Pro except for the lower brightness. So 2000 plus nits with Dolby Vision would make me switch from the iPhone 14 Pro Max and that Fold 4. Jeremy agrees on the 2000 plus nits screen and he would also like a 6000 milliamp hour battery while he's at it. Yeah, super bright screen, I'd definitely be down for that, but a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, the Xperia 1 Mark 5 would have to be a proper chubster to fit something like that in, especially as it's, you know, that 21 by 9 aspect ratio. And anyway, hopefully using the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 will negate the need for a massive battery because all the phones I've tested out so far with it have good long battery life thanks to the energy efficiency. So whoop, fingers crossed again. Next up here, Deria110 says, was expecting a better front facing camera from Sony. Have they gone for under the screen fingerprint scanner? Yeah, I think that Sony, much like myself, doesn't really give much of a shit about selfies. They're all about that rear camera. Uh, that's for sure. That's what the fingerprint sensor looked like. You had the typical flat scanner, slightly indented it and everything uh, in the Xperia 1 Mark 5. So I don't think they've changed that up. Aku says, what I really want to see with the new Sony would be a more reasonable price. But we all know that's not going to happen. Yeah, I think you're going to be shit out of luck on that one, Aku. And basically just sell off your least favourite child, you'll be fine. Oh, and on the subject of children, specifically kids coming home with ukuleles and recorders and all kinds of bloody stuff. Ben Knight says, my advice would be get them a kalimba, aka the thumb piano. It's one of the few instruments that sounds really zen, even if you just hit a bunch of random notes. Got to admit, I've never heard of this uh, before, but it looks kind of funky, kind of like portable wind chimes. Although I don't care how zen it may sound, after about three and a half hours of non-stop pummeling of this thing, I'll probably just want to rip it out of our hands and toss it out of the nearest f***ing window. It's my tolerance and patience that make me such an excellent parent. Uh, last week we were chatting about cameras on the back end of tablets and what the bloody hell was the point of all of that then. I swore hands down that it was just Satan's work, but we've had some responses from Daniel and Hathal and Areki21 and Timat CR, who've all pointed out it could be quite handy for scanning photos and documents. And Timat CR also suggests AR applications. And scanning documents, fair enough, I'll see you on that one because yeah, you might well want to scan in a letter or something and then edit it on a display that's bigger than your smartphones, especially if your eyeballs have been absolutely rinsed from decades of masturbation like mine have. So yeah, that's one reason to have a, a camera on the back end of a tablet. I'm less convinced by the AR stuff, I gotta say, I'm yet to try out an AR app that isn't shonky as shit. I did try one recently from a popular furniture company which is supposed to put a virtual version of a sofa or whatever into your room so you can check out what it looks like before you spunk lots of money on it. And the bloody sofa just kept dropping through the floor like we were living in some sort of spectral plane or something. England Collins says the Poco F5 Pro by all reports is a rebadged Redmi K60, so standard practice there then. Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, a 2K OLED display, underscreen fingerprint sensor, 5500 mAh battery, 30 watt wireless charging and a 64 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization, costing around 500 quid. I mean, that sounds nipple tweakingly brilliant. If they've packed all of that in for 500 quid, then it really does make you wonder why would you spend twice that on a flagship? Like usually there's some sort of compromise with these things. Usually the camera's a bit poo or something, but if it's got OIS in there and you've got the wireless charging and everything, then Bananarama. Of course, time will tell. We can't take it all as gospel just yet, but we'll see. Next up, KMK0 says, the wallpaper jingle should be the UK national anthem. That would be some really bloody good marketing on behalf of wall.alphacorders.com for sure. I really need to hit up those guys for sponsorship, man. The amount of bang on about them on this freaking channel. If there's anyone from wall.alphacorders.com watching, then yeah, 50 quid to Texpert Towers, please. Roberto says, waiting for your take on the new Moto Gs when they're out. Well, they should be coming out next month and you can bet your buttocks I will have my greasy hands all over those bad boys. The Motorola phones, that is, not your buttocks. 
Shaw says, are you caught up with the Attack on Titan anime? Now, I've got to admit, um, I really liked Attack on Titan uh, the first season. I got a bit into the second one, but it's just so bleak. And I was watching it when the pandemic hit and I was just like, you know what? I need some happy shit now. And I really do need to get back into Attack on Titan and also Vinland Saga as well. Now that they've stuck the, uh, the second season on Crunchyroll and everything. Michael W says, blowers were used on naval and merchant vessels to communicate between decks. And we've also got confirmation by Barry Love and a couple of other Spartans as well, so maybe it's not all total bollocks then. There you go, the internet comes up trumps. It's not just good for jerking off, apparently. And Michael W continues, I actually did back over my brand new and expensive Blackberry in my driveway many years ago. I mean, I guess at least it's not quite as embarrassing as backing over yourself in your driveway like that Brian Harvey fella managed. Okay, now on the subject of old tablets being called pads these days, um, I blamed Apple, but it turns out that actually they may not be at fault for something for a change. Ben says, in Apple's defence, Star Trek The Next Generation beat them by roughly two decades with the PADD, the Personal Access Display Device. It's almost reassuring to see that even in a distant future where humans have traversed galaxies, colonised space, manufacturers still give silly, boring names to their products. The owner says, OMG Kazar, hell that takes me back, didn't think anyone else used that. I mean, to be honest, it was probably just me and you, Leona, given how slow some of those downloads were. I remember trying to download The Matrix and I think about seven people were sharing it or something. In fact, I got so desperate, I actually went out and spent money on a DVD rather than just stealing a crappy compressed 480p version of it. Oh bugger, bang out of time, so definitely the last comment before I slap on the shorts, smother my bald bonds in sunscreen and get the f*** out of it. The Crab says, floppy oppo equals floppo. Yeah, like it. And I prefer the next week jingle where Uncle Spurt yells, next week, next week, what the F is next week, where did it go? Well mate, just for you, next week, next week, what the f*** is next week? I feel like that bloody go compare twat. Uh, and as for next week, well, if you still don't know what's happening next week, despite the fact that I literally spent over half the show banging on about MWC, well, you're either not paying any attention at all, or you're already more sloshed than I usually am. Either way, fair play. But anyway, yes, I will be over there getting lots of tasty hands-on action with all of the shiny stuff that I can find. I've just realised, actually, I think I said that Nokia was on the Sunday, but Nokia's actually on the Saturday, so I kind of f***ed that one up. So yeah, Nokia Saturday, Xiaomi on the Sunday, OnePlus and Honor on the Monday, and that's what I know about. So lots of hot tech shenanigans coming right at your face holes from tomorrow. So please do plug, subscribe, and ding that notifications bell if you haven't done it already. And if it sounds like a really wonderful weekend, cheers everybody, love you!